Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here with another video in my own personal creative journey. This week I've been making a personalised gift for a friend who is having their birthday and this friend enjoys competitive yachting as one of their hobbies. So I thought it'd be cool if I could do something along that sort of theme. What I set out to do therefore was to make a personalised embroidery um, monogram, almost, in a frame. For that I've obviously brought into play my brother embroidery machine and also the Hatch digitising embroidery software. So let me quickly show you the design um, that in its finished stage on the software then I'll show you how I did it and then at the end I will show you a couple of variations that I tried out so that you can see uh, and maybe even comment on what you think about this project. Okay, let's crack on. So here's the finished design and it uses a couple of the designs that were actually shipped with Hatch Embroidery digitising software. Here's the finished design being stitched out virtually and basically I have already assigned some colours um, according to what I thought would work well. But let's go right back to the start. From the Create Layouts um, tool set I'm choosing Insert Design. The ship's wheel is one of the designs that is shipped with the software, but I don't want to use it as is, and I will be changing that. Next I'm going to add another design, and I'm just using a keyword search to find it, a little bit easier than going through all the folders, and it's the anchor design that you see here. Next up, I'm going to use the lettering tools to add the initial of my friend, which is M for mother. I'll just resize that roughly. I'd like it to be in a different font style as well. So from the available already digitized alphabets, I'm going to choose one that I think will work, which is castle. Right, so those are my designs. I'm going to start changing them about a bit. First I'm going to ungroup all of the elements that go to make up the anchor. And then I'm going to recolour some of the elements. At this stage, I'm basically choosing the colours as to what they will be um, roughly. What I'll do later on is try and find some appropriate threads that I know I've either got or that will be available in my region. And then I can match them up uh, pretty much identically. Now for the anchor, I did not want to use it as it was. I actually just wanted an outline. Now it is possible in some instances to use just the outline feature by clicking top left where it says outline. What I wanted to do however was round off the edges a little bit as well. So I'm using the outlines and offset tools from the create layouts panel and I'm choosing the offset outline with a very small um, border and I'm assigning the color and the stitch type before I confirm the selection and I've left it on a round corner type. Now that's done as I wanted. And what I'll do now is get rid of the original. We'll come back to that in a minute, but I'm going to do the same with the letter.
Now by using the outline tool obviously it will make it non-editable in terms of characters however I'm fine with that I'm switching between my objects and colors panels so that I can work with individual elements of a design. You can see the difference in the panels there. Generally, if it's a single color with lots of elements, you'll see them all together. But on the objects panel, you'll see them individually. currently resizing things to where I think they're going to end up. I must remember to regroup the anchor or at least select all the parts before I resize it. Now by selecting all of the elements and using the alignment tools, I can position everything on top of each other. Now that's not quite where I wanted it. So a little bit more editing to go. This was the one that I showed you at the start. So I was just using that as a reference to remember what I'd done originally. Now in the object properties I'm going to start changing a few of the elements of the design. So I'm now just resizing the ship's wheel. Is that called a helm? I'm not sure. Maybe the helm is where the ship's wheel is. I'm now rearranging the order in which things will be stitched. And this is because I wanted the M, the anchor on top, the M in the middle, and then the ship's wheel at the back of the design. So I can do that in the sequence panel. just testing how that looks when it stitches out. Noticed a couple of things as it's working. One is that it's not really ideally sequenced when it comes to the wedges that make up the center of the ship's wheel. I'm just updating the design now before I go ahead and fully stitch it out. I did do a couple of tests just to see what was going to happen and I did confirm that the pie wedges weren't sequencing in order and I felt that to avoid lots of excess jump stitches and connectors it would be better if they worked in order from inside, uh, sorry, outside in and then in terms of the pie wedges going in sequence. Hopefully you'll see what I mean as I work through this.
Okay, that's all those revisions done. What I was doing at this point was turning off the true view so that I could see all of the connectors and where all the jump stitches would be just to make sure that I'm not going to have a lot of clear up and mess at the end of the stitching. It's all looking fine at this point. Yep, looks good to me. So turning true view back on. And then I chose these particular threads, which I did assign in the embroidery software. And then I did a test stitching on black fabric. Now this did mean I had to actually change the color sequence, but I did that manually just by using different threads in the machine instead of having to rework the entire design. As I say, the first stitch, um, the first test was on black fabric, uh, black cotton, and I was using two layers of tearaway stabilizer. I think you can see what a difference making sure that you've covered all the different sequencing uh, does, because you don't get all those threads all over the place between your objects. Just the closest possible connection. This next um, test was on a steel grey fabric. It does actually look a bit black in this video, but it was much different. So I did actually switch the colours back to their originals, but this didn't quite make the steering wheel stand out enough. So one final um, test that I did was on the mint fabric that you saw at the beginning of this um, section of the video. So working with the colours as I'd assigned them, working in the sequence as I'd assigned it, and really just um, working visually, I thought this colour um, collection actually worked the best. So here's the black, sorry, grey, which actually does work quite well. But as I say, I think the mint fabric with the lime greens and the steel thread, which actually looks brilliant, worked the best. And there we go, a perfect... Mm -mm. And there we go, a perfectly personalised gift for a friend who is celebrating their birthday. Listen, I hope you've got something from this video, whether it's just out of interest or you've learnt something along the way about the Hatch Embroidery software. If you have, and you'd like to leave your acknowledgement of that, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave any questions or comments in the section below the video on YouTube. And of course, if you would like to see more from me, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. And to get notifications of when new videos get uploaded, remember to hit the bell icon as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you again next time.